And just like that, we're kicking it off at Singularity <laughs> University Global Summit 2019 here with Eric Anderson, the founder of the West River Group, uh, executive chairman of Top Golf uh, and Singularity University. Eric, thanks for being here. It's great to be, and back. And back. Back, from a year ago. You know, last time we had you last, yeah. So we made sure this time. I moved. It, I moved up. Yeah, we, well, right. we want to make sure we moved you up because <laughs> you had mentioned you're going to give us some free passes last time to talk yeah. golf. Yes. And we never got those. Really? Yeah. So. Oh. They, uh, well, today, right now, before, don't let me go this time. Exactly. Give me right. cards. Right. I'll take care of you. Exactly. Well, we didn't get you in the magazine, and we'll we'll do a little trade off there. <laughs> but Eric, we're here for Singular University. Yes, absolutely. Um, you, tell us today. You have a, a, a keynote on uh, model thinking. Sure. Right? What is model thinking and what will you be talking about today? Well, so model thinking came from, I guess, a now a decade of work that I've done with my team. And it was really designed to, I think, get the leadership voice back with the leaders. And the reason that was hard or has been hard is that there's so many attacks on sort of the aspirational goals of all of these companies, especially exponential ones. If you think about, we'll use Elon Musk or somebody, right? Think about, you know, we're going to change how, you know, com how transportation works. And if you get into people who are really looking to try to be predictive, right? It's like, well, how and when and how much is it going to cost? Those are really hard questions and they're important questions, but they're not the point of what the leader, in this case, Mr. Musk, right, is trying to do. So we came back and I looked at that problem and I experienced that, my, that problem myself in certain companies I was trying to build. And I asked myself, why is that hard? And the reason it was hard is we really didn't get in control you know, of, of the ideas and then unbundle it. So we've created sort of a technique and tools to, to talk about that. So the first thing is developing the model, which has to do with you know, what, you know, what's, what's the why? Why are you doing this? So the big picture things, mm -hmm. and then we'll call the zoom in things. How are you going to do it? You know, direct sales, cost models, build factories, lease factories, all those things which we might normally think is on the spreadsheet, but aren't the broadest model. And then when that happens, right, then the leader is always talking about where they're going. And then we have mm. other conversations, that's why I call it the leadership voice. So if you and I say, let's say we're going to do donuts, right, we're going to, because I have a donut company, so it's right. important. So we're going to, you and I say, we're going to open 10 donut shops a year, and that's, that's what we think. And if someone comes to you and say, well, how and why, well, all, all these sort of stuff, and you might say, well, I have some ideas and this is that, and someone's going to pay us for that, sort of a pricing conversation. And I'd say, you know, I don't, I don't think you can do 10. I believe you can do six. So I'm going to pay you or price your company as if you can do six. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so six is what the equity investor thinks about. We're still the leader. We're still doing 10. Right. Right. They're just not going to pay us as if it's with certainty we're going to do 10. Okay. But we never give up the voice of the aspirational, of the direction of the company. Got and that was, the, that was the big idea. And then the other big idea in that was making a distinction between rigor and being predictive. Because if, if you start to play the game of, of predicting things, what you will naturally do is you'll go low. Because the way you win the predictive game is to go low. Right, because then, okay, then what did I hear? I hit my numbers and did all those sorts of things, which are really some important ideas, but they're not as important ideas being really rigorous and saying, oh, I can do, maybe I can predict four and I can hit that number, but I really have the opportunity to do 20, right? So being rigorous says, I know we can do 20. Now we work hard to go to 20. Maybe we can't predict 20, but we know if we execute properly, we can. So those is the difference between being rigorous, right, and being predictive. And those can get confused, but they're really not at all the same thing. I focus on rigor in model thinking, not necessarily prediction. Well, as long as our donuts are keto, we're going to be good. Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah, I can't do that. Uh, so what are some of the things that are maybe hindering, you know, this forward-looking vision? Uh, is it shareholder pressure? Is it... Uh, like you said, that, that aim low? It, what is it's, it? it's a form of shareholder pressure. I just think that the leaders, right, and the boards and the investors haven't stepped back and really thought deeply about some of the problems or what, what they're really trying to do. It's not really an indictment because there's many things that are hard to do. First of all, it's hard for a leader in a company to say, I don't understand this, right, for example. And we've been taught, I always tell people, one of the things is everyone I talk to about this oftentimes went to school and got good grades. 
Right. So if you went to school and got grades, you, good grades, you think you're supposed to be right 95% of the time. Well, on no planet does that happen, except in a very small planet called Stanford or Harvard, which is an unimportant planet, right? Yeah. I mean, or your wife. Or my wife, right? So you have yeah. to. So first of all, you have to get rid of this idea that being right is important. I uh, suggest to people, don't look for answers, let's keep looking for opportunity. There's lots of opportunity, very few answers all the time. But we've got a mindset about, about being right, and we overvalue prediction. Like, I'm gonna open 10 stores. So great, you open seven, you're terrible, but maybe you learned an entirely new thing that makes the company much more valuable. So we have to change that conversation. And then we also have to understand is who owns what risk. In, in my model thinking, the equity owner owns a lot of risk. And I don't always try to push it back to management, i.e., if you don't hit your number, what'd you do wrong? You maybe didn't do anything wrong. We learned something, there was volatility. So not trying to give, put so much accountability into the system as the primary idea, but put more learning into the system as the primary idea. Getting that right with the board and with your investors is, is really important work. So Singularity's, uh, the Global Summit's uh, motto this year is uh, change the future. And a lot of people, you're just referring to change and maybe change a little bit faster than normal. A lot faster than normal. A lot of people don't like change. Change um, is uh, uncomfortable. It is. What, what are some of the things that you have to pay attention to uh, in this model of thinking uh, to just put you know, shareholders at ease? Well, I think what you have to tell shareholders, to put shareholders at, at ease means you have to be going in the right direction, right? If, if you're not moving, if you're not accelerating, even if you don't see it, you're probably, you know, falling behind. There's some really interesting examples out there right now. Um, I think um, I'll, 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 I'll use a General Electric right, as an example. They had that model that you could always make earnings go up every quarter forever. There's no reality to that idea because a company's natural event is make a big investment, it works for quite a while, and then you have to reinvest, right? You have to go up and then you're gonna reinvest, you're gonna go down. You're still going in the right direction, but if you never let yourself invest and never let yourself, you know, maybe take accounting, you know, losses or put more investment and you put yourself, that can't be, right, the, that can't be the right answer. So you have to have this sense of that your company's accelerating. I really believe that you have to look at the following idea, you'll see it in my talk today, where you have the things you're doing, we call it execution value because you're executing, and the things you could do, we'll call it option value. If the board and the leaders aren't building a rich set of options, especially a set of options that address places where there is exponential opportunity or exponential risk, right, then they don't have a full dashboard of their global ecosystem, opportunity and risk. Those are, you know, that's how you get shareholders, shareholders comfortable. But they, but they have to accept the fact that in almost every industry, right, there is this digital transformation, information transformation, material transformation going on. It's going rapidly. And you have to have a leadership team and a board that looks at that, and and we'll have to make and we'll have to take certain choices and make certain bets to, to stay competitive. And I think leadership is more important now than ever with mm -hmm. this rapid growing technology. Um, I, I call it leadership energy and momentum, and why the model and those sort of ideas are really important. I think it's unrealistic to put it on a person. Even Elon Musk, who we use the example, right? You could see even when he takes takes so much pressure at some point in time, that's not sustainable. So what Elon's really good at, I think, and what other people are helping him with and others, and I don't know why we're talking about Elon, but he's fantastic, right? But you have to create these models because then you're then the model becomes this learning environment and culture, and it exists out in front of us, and we're all working on it all the time, and we identify that, right? And then this leadership energy, right, has to come down with a group of leaders, right, all over, who understand model thinking, the opportunity, and are putting leadership energy together, because it is a heavy lift to move, right, across these exponential, either move toward exponential opportunities or move over exponential you know, boundaries if you happen to run into an exponential, you know, competitor, right? right? So, but you have to have leadership, energy, and momentum, but it has to be broad-based. The model allows people to communicate effectively and share that leadership. I like that, I like that. And, and the, the reason I was going to say Thank it, you. it's important. <laughs> the reason I say it's important is, uh, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. 
uh, as technology advances, uh, culture diversity goes away. People are on the internet more. It's more objective, less subjective. Um, what are some of the conversations that you're having, you know, on your boards, on your seats, with other people about, you know, what's our impact maybe on the environment? What's our impact for energy supply? What's our impact on society? What's our impact on people in the long-term vision? What are some of the discussions that you might be having with your team? Well, we have a lot of those in a couple of uh, couple of companies. We can use uh, Top Golf as an example. Yeah, so, yeah. first of all, many companies and many of us are behind, right, that conversation. Not because people aren't, you know, are, are good people, well-intentioned, smart people, but it's we're so used to being linear that it's always hard to accept that exponential is here and happening. I do think that's starting to change, you know, uh, more and more. My classic example now is when Warren Buffett now says that Amazon's a value investment. I think about that, right? And Mr. Buffett, brilliant, one of the, the best, right? Now views Amazon, which is, you know, a high cash user and generate as a value investment. So we're winning there. At Topgolf, for example, we looked at purpose and came back and talked about connecting people in meaningful ways. Here at Singularity, right, we're talking about working toward and solving the grand challenges. So putting purpose into this conversation is really important. And then looking through, right, your businesses to see, you know, where you can really have positive effect and then really identify areas that look like they cause harm, right, we believe, and then trying to, trying to minimize those and mitigate it. That sort of has stuck, caught up on people. We really see that challenge with all the social media, right? Facebook, really, again, good leaders, right? But really, we didn't fully understand the experiment that's called social media. What's the stress it puts on people? For example, we know it puts lots of stress on, on young women. It seems to a little bit, you know, shaming and all these things. So we, we didn't think deeply, you know, about how those all those you know situations and technology you know could affect people we have to think more deeply and i think that's coming you know in more into the fore with all of these you know all these good companies uh you mentioned purpose uh, and larry fink's like 2019 letter to shareholders uh, he's mentioning that millennials 63 percent of them believe that um, the purpose of a business is to improve society over maximize shareholder value uh, you mentioned on your last uh, episode with us, uh, leaders can bring people together around purpose. What's the purpose of Singularity? Well, it is to use, to take the tools of, you know, the exponential technologies, teach leaders uh, how to use them, what they are, to solve the grand challenges for the world. Whether that those are health challenges, environmental challenges, ethical challenges, you know, energy challenges, all those things. So it's to take those technologies and make sure we empower leaders to understand them and to use them to solve these great challenges. Well, Eric, I had a pleasure uh, speaking with you again today. I know you got to run. Any <laughs> last words for our audience? And I know you have a new book uh, potentially. In the yeah, making. we're working on that. Yeah, What's we'll, we'll talk there? about that. that. There'll be more on some of this leadership and model thinking. You know, I would just suggest to you know, your audiences, you know, you know, younger leaders, right, is, is think deeply. And I really would say look to the what I'd like to call the vision endpoint of where you're going and always look to that, you can call it a North Star vision endpoint. And I always like to think about saying, I think we're going in the right direction, I'm not saying I'm right. And I think for a leader, that's a really good balance, that would be my little tip of the day. If your team believes you're going in the right direction, in the right way, but you're not saying you're always right, then that's aspirational, inspirational, and humble. And those combinations, I think will really give them a, a really solid foundation to lead. So that, that's an idea I'd leave you all with today. Well, folks, go out there and make sure you fall in the, your passion, fall in the, what you think is right, and always have a little bit of humility, uh, like Eric Grayson here. Eric, thank you so much for your time today. Good to see you. Uh, here live at the Global Summit uh, in San Francisco, California. Thank you. All right, here we go.